What is up, everybody? It's finally here. Week one of the NFL. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous time to be alive, all things considered. Uh, Coming to you, recording this on a very humid Sunday, but uh, can't complain. Football is back in our lives, and I am uh, I'm very thankful. There were two uh, pretty. I was pretty much in two games. Two games was going on today. One was week one of our fantasy league. My Stockton Slappers were going against Kyler, the creator, Thomas's team. Man, it was looking good from about eight o'clock this morning to about four fifteen. And then Thomas started to turn it on. Jared Cook had about a 40-yard reception. Never looked back. Both the Saints and Thomas' team. Right now is a 30, uh, has a 33-point lead on me, 164 to 131. I do still have a chance, though... Meh, I don't know how likely it is. I got John Connor on deck tomorrow night against the New York football giants. If the football gods are smiling on us, then John Connor will treat the giants like John Connor treats Skynet. I need 35 big ones, 35 smackaroos, John. If you could get that done for me, I'd be eternally grateful. But besides that, the real game that mattered today was your game of the week, Sunday night football, the grand opening of SoFi Stadium, also known as Stan Canyon. The Dallas Cowboys came to town. Everybody, everybody had picked against us. When I say us, of course I mean my Los Angeles Rams. And if you're listening to this podcast, then guess what? They're your Los Angeles Rams too. Everybody was doubting us. Everybody had questions going in. We answered them. We answered them in full. I was really impressed with how we played today. Very impressed. Where do we begin? In the offseason, there was a big turnover uh, at the running back position for our Rams. Todd Gurley, who had been one of our uh, best franchise Running backs, we have a long history of great running backs. Marshall Falk, Eric Dickerson, Steven Jackson, who is, in my opinion, the best out of all three. Talking about a franchise that even drafted Jerome Bettis. People weren't sure how a running game was going to look. I was confident. I've been watching Malcolm Brown hold down the number two spot behind Todd Gurley for the last five years. He got his chance today. First NFL start. Malcolm Brown, 18 carries, two touchdowns, 79 yards. I believe he had around 30 receiving yards as well. Man, he ran with the nastiness and intensity that was paramount in our uh, in our victory over the Cowboys. And behind a offensive line that was aggressive and strong, and really, them hogs were bullying the defensive front of the Cowboys, with the exception of Alden Smith. Alden Smith, quick shout out to him. Five years removed from the game. If you follow the NFL, then you know Alden Smith's story. He had some personal troubles. Man, he looked great tonight. Real happy for Alden Smith. May have had a sack. I know he had a couple hurries. We made some key stops. But all but all in all, wasn't enough. O-line for the offensive Rams played cohesive, played strong, played nasty, and were opening up some giant gaps for uh for Malcolm Brown to find holes in. Cam Akers uh was getting some rotational rotational PT. Uh we drafted him, I believe, with our fifty-four pick in the second round. Uh, you know, obviously we're gonna be looking to Cam Akers to uh to uh, fill in a bigger role as the season progresses. I really like Cam Akers receiving out of the backfield. You know, he has real soft hands. And uh, I think that showed out tonight. But 
in the off season, in preparation for this season, a lot of people were shitting on the Rams' offensive line without taking in consideration the injuries we had last year. And even with the injuries we had last year, we were still one of the better offensive lines in protecting Jared Goff as the Rams were one of the best teams and not allowing sacks last year. But we did struggle in the running game. That's where those injuries came into play. And what we saw tonight was a healthy offensive line playing in unison, really just bullying the Cowboys' defensive front. Man, I was so impressed. I was so fucking impressed. Jared Goff, uh, man, I thought Jared looked pretty pretty smooth too. I was impressed with Jared. He was getting, uh, getting the ball out of there quick, and I thought he made some pretty good decisions. And he followed the game plan. The game plan set by Sean McVay to neutralize uh, the pass rushers of the Dallas Cowboys was to utilize the flats, short, intermediate routes. Get behind them linebackers, quick. Man, I thought we did that. No, that was no more evident than on the very first drive when we were hitting Robert Woods' shallow routes and the trust that Sean McVay has in our receivers to get that yak. Yak. Get that yak, boy. Man, Robert Woods, I believe, had somewhere between six to eight receptions about 105 receiving yards, balled out. Balled the fuck out. Man, you know, Sean McVay, for some reason, there was a there was a weird, a weird uh turn uh in the attitude towards our Rams. There once upon a time, we were uh, you know, not even a we were in an after, we were an afterthought of the NFL. Bottom of the barrel. No one paid us no mind. Sean McVay comes to town. Les Need had already been there for a little bit. Sean McVay comes to town, turns around the entire franchise, makes us perennial playoff contenders. Even last year, we were in playoff contention to the very end of the season. And we had a winning record, 9-7. and seven. So I'm not entirely sure where the hate came, comes from. Part of me thinks it was, you know, we left St. Louis. St. Louis is a great sports town. St. Louis deserves a professional football team. It's just not the Rams. The Rams are the premier team of, of uh, you know, the southern half of California. Not the Chargers. Sorry about it. But it's the truth. I also think part of the hate and that uh, Marco helped illuminated this for me is uh, some of the deals we make. You know, we kind of wheel and deal like we're the Los Angeles Lakers. But, you know, your franchise has to encapsulate the attitude of your city. Los Angeles is Hollywood. We're about stars. We're about winning now. That's the attitude in L.A. What are you doing for me now? I mean, you know, Rams got to follow suit. And I think our, you know, I think we look good. I think we look great. We played a real smash mouth form of football tonight, man. On the defensive side, can't talk about the Rams defense without talking about the best player in the NFL of the last 10 years, the double A, double nines, Aaron Donald. Arguably the best defensive lineman of all time. Yeah, I went there. Yeah, I went there. One sack, one quarterback hit, seven hurries. But you cannot measure the greatness of Aaron Donald simply by his statistics. Aaron Donald is much like Randy Moss. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, if you remember when, Aaron, uh, when Randy Moss went to New England, particularly New England, his presence alone elevated the play of the, his teammates. 
Wes Welker would never have been Wes Welker without Randy Moss. Facts. Aaron Donald is of that same ilk. Aaron Donald draws a double team damn near the entire fucking game. What does that do? That allows our other players, players like Michael Brockers, Leonard Floyd, who both accumulated stats sacks tonight, to get winnable one-on-one matchups. That's greatness. How you impact the game indirectly. Speaking of the defense, our defense came up with two key stops tonight, and I need to highlight them. Jordan Fuller, safety, rookie, Ohio State. I see you, young man. The Cowboys had taken it down to the red zone with an opportunity to tie it. It was fourth down, fourth and short. Mike McCarthy decides to go for it. C.D. Lamb runs a shallow, I think it was a two-step cross. Might have been a shallow, uh, a two-step slant, excuse me. Might have been a shallow crossing route, like a drag. Jordan Fuller maneuvers around traffic, makes a beautiful open field tackle to switch possessions. That's how you earn a roster spot. That is, that is legit safety play. That encapsulates the entire term of the position. Safety. The safety net. I see you, Jordan Fuller. Hell of a play, young man. Can't talk about the Rams defense without talking about Ramsey. Can't spell Ramsey without Rams. Two plays. Two key plays. One of which, controversial. The other, not controversial at all. It was a uh, it was like a shallow out route, a three to five step out route. Mari Cooper turns towards the sideline, catches the ball. Kablooey hit stick. Jalen Ramsey forces the ball out on a third down. Would have given the Cowboys the conversion they needed to drive down the field. No sir, no sir. Trap coverage. It was originally ruled a catch and fumble. It was overturned to a uh, to a pass defense, an incomplete pass. Man, love seeing that. Love seeing cornerbacks who are nasty get in there and make open field tackles. Put the shoulders down. Helmet to the chest. That's that shit I like. Second play. This play might have decided the game. If not the game, then the play, this play could have forced a tie, which then could have forced overtime. Michael Gallup, who is a very solid receiver, very solid, very underrated. Arguably, at the end of this season, maybe even the beginning of next season, could be the Cowboys' number one receiver. I believe in Michael Gallup. Makes a, uh, it was a, what, a fly route? Deep route on Jalen Ramsey. He does have a hand on Jalen Ramsey, but there's no real clear, definitive offensive pass interference. But here's where the veteran play of Jalen Ramsey comes in. He knows he has a hand on him. He knows the game's on the line. So what does the man do? Oh, he sells it. He sells it. Hollywood, baby. The Oscar goes to Jalen Ramsey. I'll take it. I'll take it all day. I love that shit. Whatever it takes. Give me that. Ended up being an offensive pass interference. Pretty much sealed the game for the Rams. What do I like to see going forward? I would like to see the offense open up a little bit more. I do feel, you know, we could go deeper. Uh early on in the game. Man, I I tell you what, I think the Rams are the best play action bootleg team in the NFL. Hands down, bar none. I really believe that. I think going forward, and it might have been just considering how good the pass rush of the Dallas Cowboys is, Demarcus Lawrence, all pro, 
Alden Smith, reckon he's going to have an all-pro year. Jalen Smith is a stout inside linebacker. But going forward, I really think we could open the offense up, hit some of those deeper intermediate routes, some post, some corners. Hit Cooper Cup on a post route. That's money. That's money. Speaking of money, Cooper Cup got extended three years. I see. I'm glad to have Cooper Cup around, man. Cooper Cup is a G. Besides that, man, you know, hell of a game. Hell of a game. Hell of a day for football, too. There were good games across the board. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'll do a more in-depth recap on the Closers podcast. But looking forward, next week, September the 20th, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. Man, they stunk it up today. Blew a 17-point lead against the Washington Football Club. I think it sounds cooler than football team. I'm going to go Washington Football Club. <clears throat> uh, Washington had about eight sacks today, I believe. Chase Young, who's an absolute stud, had a sack fumble. Whew. That's a scary man. But I'm not in I'm not a big believer in Washington's offense, especially Dwayne Haskins. But going forward, here's what the Rams next three games look like. Philadelphia, Buffalo, New York football giants, and then finally the Washington uh football club. Those are the next four. I might have said three. Those are the next four. And out of those four games, I really see uh, probable victories against Philadelphia, New York, and Washington. Buffalo's tricky. Buffalo's tricky. That's a coin flip. That's a pick 'em game so far right now. Buffalo looked good today. Trust me, I know. I got four Buffalo Bills on my fantasy team. Foolishly, I only started three. I should have sat uh, Devin Singletary and started John Brown. But Josh Allen, Josh Allen is a stud. A dual threat quarterback, man, truly. 300 passing yards, two pass touchdowns, 50 rushing yards, one rushing TD. Dual threat quarterbacks are the new currency of uh, NFL offenses, or at least they may be going forward. But I really can see us maybe going 4-1 and one into San Francisco, our first divisional game. Optimistically, 5-0? Man, if only. But the beautiful thing is, ladies and gentlemen, football is back. And I am grateful. Count your blessings. Especially in times like these. Count your blessings. What are you grateful for? Beyond football, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for this bottle of Sailor Jerry that got me through that tense Rams-Cowboys game. And, uh, yeah, man, it's going to be a fun fall and winter. Football is back. That definitely deserves a Ric Flair. Woo! With that being said, I don't know, perfect note to end that on. Woo! Having a hard time keeping these alligators down. With that being said, finally, I'm dragging it out. Be smart. Stay safe. God bless, and I will see you all next week.